on track for 600 million in 2022, regardless of market condition. We get to sit down here on the Agent Academy podcast with Anthony John and see how he's making it happen. Anthony, welcome, brother. Hey, thanks, Chad, man. I appreciate you uh, you having me on. It's a pleasure. You bet. So let's do this real quick, because I know people want to get into the meat and potatoes, especially what here in June 24th, in the heat of some things changing. Um, people are going to want to hear what you're doing right now and what you're going to continue to do. But just give us a little backfill. Um, take us back to when you got into real estate and how you evolved to where you're at, and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of it. Yeah, it's kind of funny how I got involved. Actually, uh, I used to own a, uh, a mortgage company and 08, 09 came and then just destruction everywhere, right? Destruction everywhere. And all these licensing things happened and hell, I couldn't get half the people on my, on, on our, at our company to pass these crazy tests that they had. So I looked at it. I said, man, I said, you know, I said, I always wanted to do real estate. Let me get my real estate license and let me just try this out while I'm battling, the, you know, that big snake, which was 08 and 09. So I, so I get, so I get into real estate and I start doing this business. And I just, I said, oh my God, I said, I love this business. I go, I'm not in that pressure cooker. I'm on, I'm showing homes and everything and everything's all fun. And, and all of a sudden I got so busy that I said, what am I going to do? I said, I got to get it. I got to get somebody to help me. And I, I hired this one agent. I'll never forget it. I was like, hey, I said, do you want to do some business? He said, yeah. I said, here, take these leads that I'm going to give you. Start showing them homes. And then he started doing it. And it started getting crazier and crazier. Before you know it, we're like this big operation. It's like it's like I started in, in 2009. And it's 2022. It's been a hell of a run. Best business to be in. God, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Fun stuff. How were you generating leads when you jumped into the real estate, generating business when you jumped in? And at what point did you really dive into uh, working with the lead portals and lead conversion and all that part of the business that you're doing today? So I started that early on to be transparent with you. So back when I had the mortgage company, I always bought leads, right? So in my mind, instead of me having our, our loan officers go out and knocking on doors, I said, you know, let's, 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 let's get the leads. And, and the leads always worked for me on a mortgage side. So I said, let me do it on a real estate side. And it was just, it was even better on the real estate side than it was on the loan <laughs> side. It's unbelievable. And, and, and from day one, I, I just, I, I invested heavy on those, on those leads, heavy. It's unbelievable. Great stuff. Talk about risk. So, um, because I think that's one of the things that, that I don't think people, you know, really talk about a lot. You know, you talk about right there out of the gates in a challenging time frame and up to, you know, track into 600 million. Talk about risk through the years back then and even today as you're sitting here. I, you know, when you say risk, in, in what form do you say risk? Risk how? Taking a chance, man. Taking a chance. See, mm -hmm. see how can I say this to where it's going to come out right? I really never had a fear of any kind of risk or anything like that. And, and you know, it, it's almost like being oblivious to fear as far as in retro to, to actually selling. I, I never had a, a fear of a risk of loss or anything like that. And, and I noticed that the new people, and I'm just going to kind of fast forward. You, you take a new realtor who doesn't know anything right? They don't know anything. They don't know objections. They don't know anything. You throw them out there. Uh, uh, somebody with a good persona, good backbone, they're lighting out fire. And people that know like a lot, they're not lighting out fire. So maybe I was just oblivious to it. And I just, boom, I just, I just went skyward. So I, I had no negativity holding me down or any kind of, uh, you know, factors of me thinking, oh, there might be a risk of investing this and that. I, I didn't even think of that. How many agents do you have today? We're roughly somewhere around 80, 80, 82. Wow. Wow. You got a big group there. Big and, group. And, and they're producers, John, which is amazing, right? Because you see these big brokerages, 200, 300 people brokerages. And 90, 90, 95% of them don't do any business here at the brand. They're, I got guys and gals doing, and, and, and I, I'm saying this in a humble, humble way, but it, it, it's great motivation for people listening in. 
if they're trained right. They're doing a million and a half, two million, three million, four million, five million dollars a month. It's unbelievable what's happening. It's crazy. All good stuff. And, and, and it's like I took their their person, their 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 limit in their brain of, oh, you know, maybe we should do two, three hundred thousand. It'd be great if I did that or four. Dude, million dollars is like the minimum here. Like you're not doing a million dollars, man. You're getting like dirty looks from people. Like, how did you do a million dollars? You know. But you know, if you're doing two million, you're a centurion member. We have like classifications of you know the, the names that oh you're centurion. Oh yeah, nice job. You know, it's, it's it's really wild at the brand, really wild. How taking a look back at certainly it was you that stepped in to the business and went for it and started to grow. What has been in, in your and I'm gonna guess it's a little bit different now than than your early days. Right. Um, how did you initially start recruiting agents? Because one thing we know is that you can have all the great systems and processes and programs and platforms and, and it's all beautiful and wonderful, but if you don't have the people, you're going to be capped. Talk about recruiting in the early days and then is it any different today now as you have this established brand as you're recruiting or is it still the basics? You know, recruiting, that's a great question. Right. So that's like a super question to, to, to ask me because it's bizarre on my end on, on how I get these agents, our agents. So I do a lot on social media. Like I'm not really big on Instagram, but I'm huge on, on, on Facebook. And, and you, we're Facebook friends. You, you see the videos I shoot, you know, you know, I, I'm out here, I'm showing homes or we're, in, you know, we're talking to different realtors, you know, we, we're having so much fun on, on social media, you know, I'm showing my numbers and, and early on, you know, I had big numbers, I, you know, me, myself, personally, I was doing, you know, 20 deals a month by myself, right? So all these agents are like, oh my God, you know, he's, he's doing 20, 20 deals, blah, blah, blah. You know, here, remember I'm in Metro Detroit, you know, I'm not in, in some, you know, crazy big city. I mean, it's a big city, but it's not like, like a, like a New York city or an LA or whatnot. And, uh, and I, and I get these followers and I'd always get a message. Hey, you know, do you need any help over there? You, you know, are you hiring? And then it's always like these fans that I had that I, that I was hiring. So that's how we built the brand is all these people that were, you know, loving the success, seeing the success. They love my motivation because I'm all about motivation, positivity. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like these followers and then we just get together. We're on the same page, right? Cause they're drinking a Kool-Aid. I'm drinking a Kool-Aid. We serve a strong Kool-Aid. And we're just having fun. And that's how I, I've grown the brand with, with, with these types of people. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and one of the things let's talk about, because it's just one of the things that I've recognized in meeting you. We got to meet uh, a year ago. I don't know if it was, was it two years? Gosh, probably three years ago. No, we in, is that Wild Lopo in, in, in uh, Lopo. somewhere in, in Vegas? We were in Vegas. No, we weren't in Vegas. We were actually in California. In fact, I was with my, she was my fiance at the time. Yeah. And, and, and um, um, oh my God, Wailopo hired you uh, to, to do the speaking event. And, and, and I was in the front row and I told Nicole, I go, who is this guy? I go, he's the baddest mofo a lot. I mean, you were throwing things down. It was hitting me in the, in the soul deep. It was, it was really deep. I've never been anything like that. And uh, I told G, I said, man, whatever you guys paid this guy, he was well worth it. I said, I said, I said, he did an amazing job. And that's, that's how I got to know of you. And then I, I followed you ever since. Huge fan of yours, actually. Oh, well, thank you, man. Well, yeah. here's, here's the one thing I want to recognize is, and in, in we're old school in this business compared to, you know, the big bulk of people that have come in the last two to three years and yeah. a different generation. But the one thing that, that I noticed, whether it's you or it's your agents, talk about the simplest thing that I've recognized is how they show up. And I'm talking to you here with my baseball cap on and, and a t-shirt on, but I came from that school too of professionalism, dressed to impress. Um, talk about that. Is that a standard? Is that expected when you're hiring agents? Do you tell them that? Because I've seen how your agents show up and how important do you think it really is? You're, you're very observant, actually. You're very, very observant because it's it, it, the way that we bring somebody on. If, if somebody comes to interview with me and, and they're not suited and booted, 90%, they're not getting a second interview, right? Because they, to myself, they're not taking this very seriously. They're, they're coming in nonchalant, right? But here at the brand, yeah, it's a requirement. Suit and tie, 
right? And, and the gals are dressed to impress, right? I mean, they've got beautiful, beautiful, out, professional, right? Just sure. like just like the gentleman, because I'm a firm believer, and I think that a large part of our success is this. You've seen this. These agents will show up at a listing or show up at a showing and they're in cat. And, and I'm not saying anything bad by any means. Listen, everybody has their own style, but for goodness sakes, business wise, they're showing up in shorts, tank tops. You know, these clients couldn't, they never take these agents seriously. And then when you see a person that's suited up, they get, they automatically have credibility to that consumer. Right. And it's so huge. And I think that on our portion, the way we present ourselves to that client, it demands that respect. You know, when, when my agents say to that client, hey, you're, you're going to have to go 22 grand over, you know, list price to get this. Our, our clients believe our agent because they're, it's the way they present themselves. They're, they're, they're pros, they're professional. And, and I think that's so important in our business. And, and we're losing track of that, John. We're losing track. And, you know, I see, I, I don't understand why they're not dressing the part. How do you want to be this super successful person, but you're not dressing for that part? You're not. Yeah, really good. Well, I just, and, and again, everyone uh, goes down their own path, but uh, that's one thing that I think is, that's part of your brand, period. I think that professional, that would be my observation. And again, we've run into each other a couple times, um, certainly interact on social, but you know, just as an observer, you're a busy person, I'm a busy person, but the thing to point out, and again, you know, anyone's listening and watching, you know, go down your path, but I asked that question and, and we didn't queue up or tee up any question. I asked that question because over the years watching, that's something that really, really stood out to me. And obviously, with your results, it's it's working great. Let me ask you this: When you look at this growth trajectory, what percentage, looking back and in, into current space and time, of, of your agents have been brand new, and what percentage um, very experienced uh, with productivity under their belt, um, and, and not like this science project of percentages? Let me let me ask it this way: Brand new versus super productive already versus that third silo of you know, the right fit, but they're just in the wrong place, been in the business for a while, struggling, and we're able to take them to the next level. What has your focus been or has it been across the board as far as these 80 people that have joined you over the years? So it's a great question. I, and hopefully I, I understood it correctly. So the, a large portion, 95% of our brand, they're brand new in the business. I knew it. That's yeah. why I, I yeah. thought so. Yeah. 95%. Because here's, look, I'll give you an example. They call me all the time trying to make moves from these other brokerages. So I, I'm a bizarre guy. In my brain, I say, <laughs> look, if they were any good, why would they be jumping, right? If they were, like anybody that, that's good, they don't jump. They're, they're happy. They're making money. Life is great. They're servicing their clients. Beautiful. That's what you're supposed to do. So I never was a fan of bringing seasoned vets in. So I love getting somebody that was like me, brand new, never sold real estate before. But look, we got this kick ass. Can I say kick ass? Kick yeah, you ass said it. We're good. That, that <laughs> kick ass system. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Follow this to a T. You're going to be super successful. And that's how we do these crazy numbers. And, 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 I, and I'll tell you this, I've seen other competitors hire people that are these seasoned veterans, you know, in, in this kind of platform that, that we're in, right? And those people typically don't last that long at those, at, those, at those brands, and they wind up doing more damage to that brand because they spread so much negativity, right? They spread so much negativity that they do more damage to that person's brand than they did good. So I always try to avoid that. Yeah, good. So with that said, most people, and I love this one, when, when people, oh, we don't want brand new agents. And I, and I say a couple of things. Really, first of all, everyone, if I've got a room full of people, raise your hand if you were ever a brand new agent. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, everyone yeah. was. But yeah. here's, here's what's missing or what, what holds people back. It is a, a proper onboarding and training program. Because then if with that, you're going to have massive attrition, lack of productivity. Give us just a general overview of what 
onboarding and training looks like uh, for you for that new agent? See their first 30, 60, 90 days. All right. So I think that's a big gap for most people. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I'll give it to you exactly the way it is at the brand. So somebody's brand new uh, in the business. We have a, uh, a gentleman, Russ Moroni comes in, he'll take them through and he'll, he'll do a, uh, a literally a one month crash course in real estate contracts, you know, contracts are huge at the brand, right? Russ isn't really teaching our people how to sell, right? We don't want him to do that. We just want to walk them through the actual systems, uh, contracts, things like that. And in the meantime, what we do is, because I've got a, a really bizarre way that we run the brand, okay? Because I technically am like the president of a country, you could say, and then we got Congress, right? And we call it Congress. And then we've got six members of Congress, which are the team captains, right? And then there's the agents that are underneath them. So what we do is we, 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 we pair them up with Russ. Russ goes through, trains them up on, you know, listing contracts, all these things. We, we want to make sure that they understand the legalities of our business. Then they go back to our, our Congress members. Then they'll sit with them and then they'll shadow them. They'll actually go out on showings with them. They'll go out and um, uh, on listing appointments with them because I'm a firm believer and you're smart. You see this. I don't want the blind leading the blind, right? So we want somebody that's spectacular, like at the brand, in order to be a team captain, you have, you have to be with me for quite a while. Your numbers have to be huge, right? In order for you to lead a ship. So the person automatically just starts learning this team captain's ways, right? On how to talk, how to open that door, how to, you know, pitch this listing uh, appointment. And they learn a lot from them. And then what we do is here at the brand, we have weekly masterminds, right? So every Monday and every Wednesday, we are covering every single scenario that could happen in real estate at these uh, masterminds. And then we role play. We role play quite often. We role play our, our buyer's pitch. We role play our listing presentation. Everybody has to go up front in front of the whole team and, and to this presentation, which, you know, once they get done with it, I mean, they're all sweating, you know, initially, but after a while, it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's like me talking to you. It's like no big deal. Right. I mean, we're just shooting the breeze. We're chatting. And that's, that's, I, I think that's a big part of our success is that our agents are, are, are very confident mm -hmm. in, in a very short amount of time, right. They don't take long to be confident in talking with a consumer. So these are like a group of uh, squad leaders, others would call them, or mentors, if you will, similar roles yes. uh, that they deliver uh, from a space of volunteerism. Are they compensated no. a little bit? No, How's it work? No, no, they're definitely compensated. Good. So, so they're, they're definitely compensated. So this is the way I looked at it, right? So I said, as I'm growing this ship, right, one person... One person is not enough to lead a big operation. I, I, it's almost becomes like, it, it's too big for them. It's too big for me, right? I want to be able to, to have people that are long-term with me too, right? I mean, look, imagine, John, you're, you're a realtor, right? Let's say that we were part of the same ship, right? And, and you know, John, you, you've been a realtor for three years, four years for the brand, Man, John, you're doing such a great job. I might lose you one day. I might lose you because you, you, you're going to be like, you know, what's next for me, right? So, so I say, you know what, John? I think it's time for you to get leveled up. I think it's time for you to be a team captain. So I take John, who's already a bad mofo, right? Now I can take your experience, your, all, the, all the wisdom that you have, right? And I can start to build a beautiful a uh, beautiful unit underneath you, right? So I hired Jimmy, Cindy. Hey, I said, you know, John, look, we're going to add Jimmy, Cindy onto your, to, to your unit. And you're going to say, oh, you know what? Let's, let's go. Let me show you what I'm doing. And all of a sudden, Jimmy, Cindy are seeing John's ways. And all of a sudden, they're starting to produce big numbers because you're a big producer, right? Because they're following your lead. And that's how we grow these units. And that's how we grow the brand. So let's help the leaders, because, you know, you, one thing that uh, 
I think I want everyone to notice and recognize, and I just observed it, is you are constantly in rooms across the country with other high performers. Right. And that's what, that's what high performers do, right. Const- lifelong learners. But you've probably heard this one or been asked this one um, uh, all the time. How do you insulate yourself from one of those leaders saying, I'm taking off and taking all these people that are underneath me with me? Well, that's, that's a great question, right? So we've got a pretty bulletproof contract that we do at the brand, Mm -hmm. but here's the thing though, I haven't had that happen And, 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 and it won't happen. Because my people are loyal to me. And here's why. I am loyal to them, right? I created this for them. See, look, I, I didn't have to do any of that. But I do this because, look, I'm a, I was an agent. I'm still an agent. And I never would want to be stuck in one role, right? You know, in 15 years, look, I'm 47. I don't know if I'm going to be able to run around you know, and do all these showings or, or, or listings like I am right now. I mean, even, even right now, the bones hurt a little bit. I mean, I'm not in good shape like you. I mean, I'm decent, but not like you. So, and I, and I told them that, look, this is what I'm creating for you. And you're going to have a residual income from your people. So they, they get X percentage from each agent that I put into their platoon mm-hmm. and it will go for them for the life of their career. So, mm-hmm. So, so, so here's what's cool. So in 10 years, right, 12 years, you know, let's say, John, you can't make those moves that you did. Hey, the brand is there for you. This is your unit. Just, hey, sit at the desk and run that unit. You know, keep doing what you're doing. And I, I gave them a great out, right? I gave them a great out for the future. So they're very loyal. And then number two, this is a question that, that you should be asking me is what happens, Anthony, if these, I'm not going to name these companies, okay, but there's like a certain company that just would love to steal every single agent that you have. Well, right? every company wants to, though. Come on. Yeah, but, there's this, yeah, business. But, there's, but there's this one specific company <laughs> that, you know, that is very unique at how they try to recruit you. And, uh-huh. and they've tried to recruit my top people, and they can't get them. They can't get them because of the way that the, the, the system at the brand, right? For so I'm going to, I'm going to argue that with you. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Because, uh, all of your people could get a better deal anywhere. Of course they can. And, and so it's no matter what the modeling is, it's, it's relationship with you people join or leave you. So I think that's the thing to really point out big time. What is it in your relationships? Because here's, this is the it factor secret sauce. Because guess what? I can show you Keller Williams, EXP, Remax. I can show you every single one of them that, you know what? Their culture, their retention. One of my clients, I mean, he runs a huge Remax, 200 plus agents. His attrition's next to none. And then you can go over to another great Remax that has a typical 20% or 30% attrition. Most larger brokerages do. And they're both running good operations, but there's an it factor. So, so that's what I would say coming back to it. Now, it's not a brand thing so much or modeling piece. It's a leader thing. How do you, this is my belief, and yeah. the good thing is it's a conversation. I believe what keeps people is deep psychological, emotional bonds. How do you create this depth? Sure, you've got the money equation there with them. Absolutely. But how do you build this this? Um, vague thing that people talk about culture that has teeth in it. Well, look, I agree with you. I agree with what you're saying. No, I I really do. You know, and obviously the bonds are there, right? The bonds are there. But one thing that I want to add though to it is our brand is so different than the bulk of the brands in Michigan. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying outside in Michigan because I spend so much money on leads you know, when they come to our brand, okay, it is not like, I don't want to name names, XYZ Realty or, you know, you know, ABC Realty. It's nothing like it. You see, we have the support that that agent needs, not just in technology, but in leads. They need customers, right? And that's the difference between our brand 
and the rest of them. This is why I don't really worry too much about them leaving because they're not going to get what we have because these, these agencies, they can't afford to spend what I spend monthly, you know, and, and I'm dropping over 300 some odd thousand dollars a month here in the, in the Metro Detroit area for this. The bulk of these brands spend maybe 30, 40, 50 tops. And that's, that's why a lot of people want to be at the brand. And because we have quality clients that they're servicing along with, you know, the, the rapport that we have with our ages. I mean, we're all about our ages. We love our ages. You know, we're loyal to them. They're loyal to us and, and everybody's having fun, right? There's a lot of fun, you know, there's, there's a lot of swag, you know, you know, we're all about the videos and we want, we want the whole world to see what we're doing. It's fun yeah. stuff. I saw a video of um, young guys and not ego. I mean, it wasn't, but, but uh, I don't know, it was maybe it was a year ago, four or five young men, probably in their twenties, proud. And, and I could see pride, not ego of their, you know, Louis Vuitton belt or a Gucci belt and their nice shirts pressed. And, and you can sense the difference between pride and professionalism versus, you know, being kind of douchey with ego and that. And, and, and that's really important because what I sense from them too is, you know, these are guys that came from just regular old jobs, young men that all of a sudden have uh, these great careers. I remember that video. Yeah, no, and, and, and you're spot on. Like, like I told you again, it's, 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 it's creepy in a good way how observant you are. One thing at the brand, we don't want to be um, anything but humble, you know, but, we, you know, but we're showing though a lifestyle. We're showing the swag, we're, but we're never, like even myself, because it comes from the leader itself. You'll always see, I'm never bragging on something on me. You know, I'm, I'm always spotlighting my people. Because my people are what matter, not me. I mean, I'm a, you know, I could I, I could be gone tomorrow, but it's it's every person at this brand is so special, and I love spotlighting them, and 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 they see the way how humble I am, you know. Believe it or not, I am humble, and and people appreciate that, and they see that, and they say, hey, you know, if Anthony John's not doing that, why would I do that? And we, but we love to show our numbers, we love to show, you know, our clients, our, the homes, the cars. The, it's just for motivation. It's not about brag. It's motivation. Right, right. How, um, really, really good. Thank you for all that. I want to go a little bit further on this with these um, squads, mentors. Is there a certain time frame that, uh, and or level of production where someone um, stays on the squad uh, and then they can graduate out of it? Um, or is it an ongoing thing? Everyone's required to be in one of these squads. What's that look like? So what happens is, is that everybody, when you say requirement, it, sound, it, it could sound negative. It, it's not that it's a, it's a requirement. Here's what happens. You want to be on the brand. I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to figure up what kind of personality you have. Cause there's six different personalities on these squads. Right. So, you know, if somebody was more analytical, whatever, we're going to put them on so-and-so squad because they're very analytical. So you're matching agents with personnel squads that map to their personality yes it's very important mm -hmm. because if you don't you're going to have a lot of you know you, you can't put the engineer type with me okay because they're you know I, we're, we're just you know we're just completely you know different people right so we want to kind of match up everybody all together i mean we we have twists in each unit but um, sure. no, it generally works out best that way. Yeah, yeah, for really us. good. And so, so then going forward, though, do they stay in that squad ongoing? Yes, because what happens is, so mm -hmm. I know this is going to sound bizarre to you when I say this. Um, I'm big into the military, and and I love and I love watching these old mafia movies. Okay. Love that stuff. And then I watch, it, it, listen, because I, you know, I'm always thinking outside the box. Before, be, right at the point where we started getting all these people, I said, I said, how could I do this to where it would make sense? And I realized I was watching that Gambino movie. I said, I love, there's a boss, there's an underboss, there's captains, there's soldiers. I said, this is beautiful. I don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? And it, and it makes so much sense, right? And, and it's worked for all those years, right? And then I watched the military, right? I watched the mil a Navy SEAL, right? 
they've got a squad, they've got a unit. There's a head person to each unit. There's a paramedic, there's a, there's a, there's a sniper, there's the, 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 you know, the, the medic guy, whatever, they're all in that unit. So I watch these units, they create this big bond. There's somebody that's always something, they specialize in something on that unit, which is like somebody might be really strong at for sale by owners or expired listings. Then there's somebody who's like, oh my God, if it's a million plus dollar buyer, they're like this really big time specialist and they just role play, they mastermind with one another. And, oh, hey, you know what, John? I, I can't make this showing. Can you do me a favor? Can you, can you, can you take care of this client for me while, while I'm gone for two hours? And they bond up so much that all these units, they're like prospering because they back each other up. Somebody doesn't know some, something. They just, they ping off one another. It's unbelievable. And then we create chats for them. They have their own chat room, which, which you know, they're always conspiring. They're always, you know, in a good way. It's, it's unbelievable. So much positivity. And it's just so much more performance out of them when they're bonded up like that. They're not alone. They're not alone. They, they're, they're part of something bigger than themselves. Awesome. So in the uh, level of production, you are with um, certainly the one percenters when you look at the lead flow that you have coming in and everyone's it's so interesting because you, you know if you and I wanted to start a big conversation we could do there's two posts we could do um yeah I, I'd say it's these two, two what do you think of Zillow the other one would be tell me about your ISA program I mean everyone's always interested are you heavy ISA or very light ISA and you know something I believe the agent needs to be right on top of the lead or are you somewhere in the middle? Talk about that with your leads. So that's a great question. So I, I've watched many facets of this, yeah. you know, side, yeah. right? And, and they keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They keep going round and round and round. So everybody has a different opinion. Here's my opinion. Yeah. I don't believe in ISAs for our brain, okay? Because here, look, I'll give you an example. Yeah. An agent. Me and you are old school. You've, you've read every sales book. You, you know, so have I, right? I'm a big Tom Hopkins fan, right? From way back in the, the day. The first right? seminar I went to 34 years ago, my mom gave me a ticket. Best, I, it was probably one of the, the best uh, presents you could have ever gotten. Told me to go door knocking. So I yeah. did. Yeah, 110%. Listen, and, and you build that alligator skin, right? You get resilient. You, you start seeing things. But he, what does he say? You got a prospect. So what happens is, I give you a prime example because I know we're going to be limited on time, so I don't want to go too far in this. But I could I could spend five hours with you on this. Sure. An agent, what is their job? It's to sell, right? It's to sell, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these companies that have these ISAs, what do they do? Boom, they just pass them this this lead, this appointment. They give them this appointment. They go show this home, and their conversion, honestly, I think sucks. Okay, but you take an agent, you take that same agent, if that agent would have prospected, right? And, 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 and prospected that client themselves, mm -hmm. they have a bigger rapport or will have a bigger rapport with that client. And when they do meet that client, they'll have a higher probability of converting that client than somebody just, hey, setting this appointment for them. It, it's, it's bizarre. It, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. And, and then I watch these big teams because we all mastermind. And I told mm -hmm. one guy specific, I said, dude, you're doing it all wrong. You're spending all this money on these freaking ISAs. I go, they suck. Your agents suck, man. And you wonder, you said this one lead source sucks. I think you suck. I, I, you're doing it all wrong. Try it this way. And they're so hard-headed. Nobody wants to try. Oh, my agent isn't going to call. What do you mean your agent's not going to call? You're telling me a salesman or a saleswoman does not want to prospect? Are you freaking nuts? That's crazy. It's out of control. It really is. So I think the biggest success for us is that we prospect daily. We prospect daily. We prospect within the pool. But when a lead comes in, there's no ISA intercepting that lead. No way. It's my agent within milliseconds claiming that lead, calling them as an agent, right? And they are setting the appointment. They are sending them the report on that house, the listing ticket, seller's disclosures, right? Because they're showing that client that, hey, I'm not just going to, you know, open a door for you. I'm going to give you all the information to this house, along with the seller's disclosures, find out what they're looking for, take them out, 
show the home, they meet them, and guess how they look? They're suit and tie, their cars washed up. They said, wow, who is this guy? Who is this gal? And boom, you know, voila, you know, they're getting a deal done. Versus, you know, the other way, you know, there's somebody sitting in a cubicle. Oh, yeah, we'll set this appointment up for you. are going to meet Jamie or Cindy. Oh, okay. Jamie or Cindy. All right. Well, you know, it's creepy. And then they show up. They don't even know who this person is. They don't even know what they looked at. They're just here to open this door. And then they wonder why these, you know, these clients are not sticking with, the, with, these, with these agents. You know, their conversion sucks. So who owns then, certainly you own everything. And I don't mean from a, I'm the owner, I'm the boss. We own, we own the result. When things are good, it's your fault. When things are bad, it's your fault. That's what CEOs do, owners do. But as far as your leadership team is concerned, because everything elevates up to you, uh, do each one of your squad leaders own leading the conversion, leading the activities that uh, and, and the accountability of each one of the agents in their squad? Or is there a sales manager you have that manages that? No, we don't have a sales manager. So, so, so that this is something that I am working on internally, right? So this is something that, that I want to tighten up, right? So okay. you know, we're, we're ever expanding, you know, and I'm ever learning, right? So we are working on that portion right now you know, the expectation is, look, we want to be at a million dollars a month per agent, right? We got to have 1600 calls in per month, right? Uh, you know, 400 per week, you know, we want to see 12 new buyers, right? Two new sellers. Um, and, you know, we have the expectation. Now, are my team captains, you know, hammering them on calls? They're not, right? Let's be real. They're not, right? but they are there for everything else. And this is something that I am working on bettering at the brand where, because I feel, cause I'm going to give you our negatives. Sure. I feel like our accountability sucks. Meaning that we just concentrate on the volume, right? Really the volume has always been the most important. I mean, you've got the basics, right? The bare, right? The bare basics. You got to do these calls. You got to do this, you got to do that. But we really want the volume, right? We want to be at a million dollars a month. These, the, our team captains, they're dynamic. They're the best in the business. But are they holding them accountable in that way? No, they're not. We're doing it under one big umbrella with our masterminds. Like, hey, did you, you know, there's me at the podium. Are you guys hitting these, you know, these calls? You know, where are we at on this? And that's something that I think my team captains should be doing more than I should be doing. So, and, and one thing I want to recognize right now, and yeah. for those of you that are watching and listening this, uh, listening to this on um, podcast, is is that right there? Is leader great leaders have that humility, vulnerability, transparency? That's transparency. Watch so many people in the real estate industry want to just tell you everything's perfect. And you've got someone here that's running a great organization and sharing the things that are working, but also it's that person, that leader, the true leader is the one to say, you know something, uh, we're doing pretty good, but let me tell you where we're falling down or not performing at the level that we want to. And, and I'm going to tell you something, you know, it's so many times people ask leaders the wrong question. And it's the one of tell me the secret. No, tell me where you're screwing up and that will tell you everything and tell me what your challenges are. And that's everything. So, um, let me leave you with uh, leave everyone with this. What um, what would you say is your superpower? You as a leader, what is your absolute superpower? My superpower would be is I'm the hype man. I will hype everybody up. I will get them ready. We're gonna strap. Remember you laughed. We're gonna strap that helmet on you. And some rockets, okay? And we're going to launch I you. was telling Brittany, I told you that. You were messaging me. And she's like us, man. Brittany's Listen, we're lighting it, man. We're light the wick, and we're going to the moon. Listen, because, you know, we live in a bubble, right? And this bubble is unbelievable, and that's the way you want to keep it. So I, I think my superpower is my positivity, my motivation. I lead by that when I deal with clients or when I'm dealing with friends or whoever it is that's around me. You know, you're going to get hyped up you're going to, you're going to get the love and it's going to be a real love, right? Cause I love everybody that's on it. And if you're not on it, I'd love to see you be on it. Yeah, that's good. Well, and I want to 
point out that and then um, ask one other question yeah. is, you know, many people hear inspiration, motivation and all that, but guess what? It's not, I mean, and hype is the description Anthony's using, but I'll tell you what, people join or leave energy. They respond to energy. Energy enters the room before you do. Here's the difference though, is sustainability of that energy. And that's where leaders fall down. You right. can't, it's, it's like, it can't be manufactured. And that's one of the things that, that you've demonstrated. It's not manufactured, it's who you are. I wanna leave uh, with this, considering the time of the market and where we're at. Uh, what, what are your predictions for the, and listen, I'm the furthest from an economist. I've just been in the business 34 years and, and we just work hard. What do you see happening in the, the next 12 months in the marketplace? And how are you feeling about the brand going into this marketplace that we're starting to experience? I, this is what I foresee. Look, I think that the next six months are still going to be good. Okay. The next six months are still going to be good. You have a lot of people that wanted to buy beforehand, but couldn't because of these multiple offer situations, right? All these people that haven't purchased, they're, they're, they're coming out of the woodwork to purchase. They're not really, believe it or not, they're really not too concerned with the rates, right? Now, because remember, it's a lot easier to do a 6% interest rate and not pay $80,000 over list price, right? Because they can always refinance, right? I tell all these guys and gals, come, what are we going to do? Listen, it's not a big deal. These rates aren't going to stay this way forever. They can always refinance later. These, these deals are getting negotiated downwards. I, they just did one here at the brand, almost $90,000 off of list price. If this was a month and a half ago, it would have been 90 grand over, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's got to be some give, right? Now, 2023, I got to tell you, I see a lot of change happening. I'm going to, we're, you know, we're going to see a lot of people that are in business that are not going to be in business because they, they're just, you know, they were so used to, you know, you had a good piece that I read the other day. In fact, I shared it on my Facebook, you know, your non-work ethic ways are <laughs> out the window. You know, you, you, you aren't in the grind, you know, the way you should be. You're going to be out of business. Uh, we're going to see a lot of people get shuffled out. And you're going to see a lot of people double and triple their business because their their operations are going to grow even even bigger because these other companies they're they're going to leave them and and I don't want to spend too much time on this but believe me the energy level because you brought it up of of their owner of their executive team is is going to make the difference on if you're going to make it or not because man if your energy is off and you're showing weakness, or you're not showing motivation or, or, or positiveness, man, you might as well just pack it up today, because you're, you're, you're not going to make it through, because these people, they're already, they've got the jitters, right? They've got the jitters. They've got the jitters. No really good. Way. Anthony, on that, um, thank you so much. I know your time is really valuable, and I appreciate it, and I also know you're someone that uh, is a contributor to the business and want to inspire other folks. Um, yes. Thank you so much, my man. No, listen, I appreciate everything. You see, I've got a plane to catch. So, I mean, it's all good. <laughs> We're going to get it done all together. Appreciate you, John, for everything. You're, you're a sharp guy, and I love your content and, and the whole brand, man. We always read your stuff. It's unbelievable. Great work on, on your end. Great work. Great work. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you.